We keep saying, well, we have to teach our son. No, actually, not enough people are saying that we have to teach our son. The F word came out of my mouth in front of our son. <laughs> I was not feeling that instant. Mark up, yeah. Hi, I'm Malini, and welcome to another episode of The Girl Tribe. I have been a super fan of yours, watching your movies ages and ages. And I don't mean ages ago, but I'm saying for ages. I've been oh, such that's a, okay. such a Thank fan. you. And one of the things that I'm really grateful that you're here to talk about is, you know, changing from having a career to focusing on being a mom. So what was that like for you? And you decided to stop working? Well, you know, Malini, actually somewhere, I come from a very middle class uh, Maharashtrian background. So though Maharashtrians are very broad-minded, they educate their daughters and education is very important. Yet there is a subconscious that none of us realize that however educated we are, and it's not just India, anywhere in the world, the mm. patriarchal system is very strong. So yeah. somewhere in our subconscious, we always think that, you know, it's kids, it's family, and you need to give the kid the time. Yeah. And, you know, part of it was very in my subconscious that that's what you do. do yeah. The other part was that, yes, I'm going to take my time. The only thing I thought I was being very, uh, you know, modern about, so to say, was that I will take my time to have a baby so mm. when I'm ready to take the break. But there are times now, 12 years down the line, where when one thinks that, was it important to take that break? When right. the upbringing is concerned, yes, it was. I see the difference and uh, it's very, very important that you are able to give that kind of time. Yeah. So there are questions a lot of times that I ask myself that this is great, no regrets, but could it have been done in a different way? And could I have achieved the same result by doing it in a different and way? And that's the big dilemma. Like even on the girl tribe, this constant struggle, which, you know, women get asked this already, you know, all the time. Like, what is your work-life balance? And I, I get really angry because I'm like, nobody asked my husband about his work-life yeah. balance. I mean, ours is different because our work and life is the same. But this struggle about, can I do both? Am I going to be a terrible mom if I don't give up There's everything? There's a lot of guilt. You know, when I wrote my book, The Modern Gurukul, and I was, I was taking it, I took it all over the country and when I was talking about it, I had so many women come up to me and say there were simple, small, small things which, you know, never really get spoken about. And mm. there were women who would come up and say that, you know, I have a two-year-old baby and I'm still living with the guilt that I didn't breastfeed my child properly. Wow. And what, what, what does that mean inside. properly? Like they, they weren't around? They thought that they were not being good mothers because they didn't breastfeed for that whole year or something like that. Sometimes you can't. Yeah, Sometimes you can't. can't. Yeah. There are different issues, but nobody really talks about it. Yeah. And in my book, I did. I said, you know, I was having issues with it and I also spoke about the fact that uh, when I saw the baby, I was not feeling that instant. And then you freak out. out. Yeah, <laughs> it was not happening. So I was like, yeah. what is happening to me? It, it was bizarre. I mean, it was not something. Yeah. Uh, I, it was definitely, there were a lot of really strong emotions, but I don't know if love was one of them. I grew and uh, to fall in love, love with yeah. my son. Yeah. I adore him now. But I think it has been a process. But yeah. it doesn't take away, it doesn't make me a bad mother. And that's the thing, nobody ever says that about fathers, right? Yeah. Because they're like, no, they oh, you didn't... about, are you a good father or not? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Should. <laughs> they should, but you know, it's the thing just is... just that what happens is that question is asked by the time it's too late. It's too late, really it's, yeah, it's a, the it. ship has yeah. sailed. And one of the things that I really wanted to talk to you about is you're raising a son. Yes. You know, and I think in this day and age, we're so much horror and horrific things are happening to women as much as we're evolving and women can do whatever they want and work on some other end of the spectrum things are out of control yes. and we keep saying well we have to teach our sons we have to teach our sons no actually yeah. not enough people are saying that we have to teach our sons mm. even now people say teach our daughters to cover up to talk properly to sit properly how are you sitting what are you wearing you can't yeah. be too boisterous yeah you are eventually, but you're told that constantly. Nobody tells a boy that. So mm. I really, really do believe that we need to talk to our boys. And there's no point talking to them later on. Yes, you can maybe counsel them, give them therapy. But the point is, we are all eventually women bringing up these boys. So why are they turning out like this? Yeah, what we is are women. Why? I can't understand that. I think one of the best things that I read that you said was that um, from your book, you're like, I'm not an expert on parenting. Yeah. I'm an expert on my son. So how old is he now? He's 12. He's 12. So yeah. 
Does he know about rape? Does he know yes. about and have you talked to him about it? It was very funny actually the way this explanation of rape came about. The f word came out of my mouth in front of us. <laughs> Can you imagine? And Goldie was like, "I am so relieved it was not <laughs> vindicated." Yeah. yeah. So and my son is just gleefully smiling away. He was like, "Yeah, yeah. mama of all yeah. the people has done it." So yeah, then we went into it. I said, "Listen, I know you know the word, but you know the important thing is to know that you cannot use it and it's not a nice word to use and mm. you know I'm human and I have made a mistake and I'm really sorry about it we went through all that we sat down and then he just said but you know I can't even, I don't even understand what's such a big deal about this word I mean why is it such a bad word so then it was like you know what do we do and we said okay you know you're too young to know about Genius. it you'll know two years later we'll tell you or whatever so goldie just looked at me and he said you know what there is never later yeah. if the question has come up that means this is the time, time yeah so he just put everything down and he said you know what i'm telling you is very important ranveer and i need you to understand it and but this is what this word means but i need you to understand that sex is not bad and when when you know two people are in love with yeah. each other it's the most beautiful thing but the same thing which is so beautiful if you've heard the word rape is the most atrocious thing you can do to another human wow. being yeah. because you're violating a person's innermost being without permission and forcefully so the same act which can give you immense pleasure and is full of love and creates a miracle which is you for us can be the most horrendous thing which can be worse than a nuclear bomb i was like i wanted to stand that's up that's like a standing ovation standing ovation that's the most best explanation i've ever heard i said why couldn't you give this before i wrote the book i could have put it in the book you know but jokes aside yeah. i thought it was really it was well so said well put. what it was he like what was his response was he shy about it or you become shy about it when something is hidden from you mm. when it is not hidden from you why would you be shy about yeah, it yeah yeah amazing this is like incredible this like explanation is quite blown my mind right now <laughs> and i'm sure it's blown the girl tribe's mind but i have a couple of questions that came in for you mm. um and this is one from debolina who says you know after having a baby careers always take the back seat and how did you deal with that i think you answered that to some degree and she said that i'm always worried about managing my time and how to prioritize you know honestly i'm so lucky that i could take the break because a lot of people just need to make the money and mm. it's it, that, that's that's, that's not something yeah, that they, they can afford choice. you yeah. know yeah. so for mothers of who cannot and you know that feeling of guilt because we are so as women filled with guilt about everything yeah. i'm too happy today i'm feeling guilty today. it's literally like yeah. that you know it's like we are psyched to be guilty about everything and uh, it's just something that we need to work on and say that hello i'm feeling guilt which i needn't be feeling you literally need to sit down and talk to yourself and say i'm doing the best i can in the I'm human situation and it's okay yes, yeah it's yeah. really okay and i'm doing the best i can in this situation all right this one is from pinky bhatia who says my daughter is just about 12 13 now mm. and she's getting irritated all the time mm. and i think it's because her hormones are changing and it affects the whole house and she says she even fights with her younger brother for silly reasons what should she do and i'm sure it can't be that much different having a son we all say a lot of things about hormones mm. but a very important thing that is happening in teenage brain is it's a brain that's still forming and so what is happening is they're finding those pathways and literally the frontal lobe is what is your strong mm. emotional point is the only thing that has developed fully and the one that kind of manages you the maturity, the maturity. that you talk about has not developed that part of the brain so it's not just hormones or them behaving badly poor things they themselves are not understanding mm. what is happening in it's my brain it's not all there yet yeah. yes and so if yeah. if you look at it in that way and you know somewhere you when you understand that oh my god that poor brain is struggling you'll probably deal with it in a different way yeah. you'll probably be more empathetic towards the child mm -hmm. and maybe form a better connection a better connection yeah. wow amazing um normally better to start that connection right from the age of 6 and 7 yeah. so by the time you get to these preteens you're kind of yeah. dealing with it already yeah. I love it. Thank you so much. This has been the most fantastic conversation oh. and I knew it would be since <laughs> I've been following the book club and finally I'm going to ask you to write a pledge for me, something okay. that's going to go up on my girl tribe wall, uh something that's going to remind me all the beautiful ladies who've been here have made a pledge for me. My girl tribe pledge is to raise my boy
to what you said with empathy look and, yeah. at the world with compassion and empathy that's beautiful that's yeah. amazing that's perfect thank you so I much i need to sign it you need to sign it and you need to pin it up for me on the board along with your picture that's the picture oh nice. <laughs> so everyone remembers whose pledge it is <laughs> yes yeah there should be some pins up there yeah okay that okay that's perfect yeah Sonali, this has been amazing. Thank you so much Thank for coming you. here. And I knew we'd have an amazing conversation. And by the way, inspired by Sonali's book club, go and join that as well. There's Malini's Girl Tribe. And we're going to meet you somewhere in between those two places. Oh. And now, of course, as always, Girl Tribe, the spotlight is on you. These women, who we call warriors, have come out on top of everything that life throws at them and they've come out shining. Here's the story of one such warrior whose tale of determination and positivity will put a big smile on your face. The inspirational story of Nikhila, an author and a blogger from Andhra Pradesh. She was born as any regular child with normal muscle control, but things took a drastic turn when she was hit with muscular dystrophy a rare condition at a very tender age. The muscle damage eventually confined her to a wheelchair. You and I cannot even begin to imagine the trauma of losing our ability to walk at such a young age. Being in a wheelchair comes with its own harsh reality and Nikola had to adapt to this curveball that destiny had thrown at her. After school, she opted for a bachelor's degree in commerce with the help of her father who carried her in his arms until the very last day of her graduation. However, post college, she couldn't take up a job like her friends as it required her to move out of the city. Alienated and distressed, she decided to pursue an MBA, which seemed difficult as the college campuses weren't wheelchair friendly. They lacked basic amenities like elevators or ramps for differently abled people. If there's anything that kept Nikola going, it was her endless courage and optimism. With the help of her family and friends, she retained the spirit to thrive and reach for the stars. She started to build her confidence by working from home. Her journey led her to start a blog called Nikki's Talk. Little did she know that one decision would lead to what she calls an absolute miracle. It was through her blog that she met Nikhil Chandwani, an established author who suggested that she write a book. Today, Nikhila is the proud author of The Day I Started Flying, a book about her life as a specially abled girl. As she quotes rightly, there are miracles happening every day in this universe. Here's what a very special friend of mine had to say. Hi Nikhila, firstly, this is Alia. A big big warm hug from wherever you are right now. Uh, I have to say you've been a true inspiration for not just me but all us young girls out there. Uh congratulations on finally completing your book. Keep it up and as I said you're a big inspiration um and I hope other girls listen to your story, hear your story and really learn from it to really make a difference in their lives and in other people's lives. Thank you so much for your story. Lots of love. Thank you so much Nikhila for sharing your story. You are a true warrior. You must shine on and that's why you're going on my Girl Tribe Wall of Fame. And that's all for today's episode of the Girl Tribe. Please hit like, share, love, post a big old giant heart in the comments and keep coming back for more. And the conversation does not end here. I'm starting a brand new thread on Malini's Girl Tribe with this question. What should we be teaching our sons and for that matter our daughters the next generation what do we teach them about safety and respect and the gender imbalance how much is too much information how much can we expose them to especially when it comes to the horrors of rape and murder come join Malini's Girl Tribe on Facebook and join that conversation I'll see you guys next week till then remember let your vibe attract your tribe <laughs>